Hey there, what is going on? It is Rob from Crypto Bobby, and today we have big, big news uh, per usual being driven out of China, and it is news to the downside, as we can see here looking at Coinigy. Uh, if you weren't aware, or if you were sleeping, or if you haven't checked your block folio or whatever it is you use, basically the entire cryptocurrency markets today are getting absolutely hammered, absolutely slammed, and it is due to a, due in part at this point in time to a tweet and from some market news over from Bitcoin China, the exchange, BTCC. So we'll hop into this and now we'll talk about what it means for you, what I think is going to happen in the near future here and how this is going to potentially affect you moving forward. So let's get into it. And if you are new to the channel, definitely hit the subscribe button. That'd be fantastic. I do daily recorded videos on the subject of cryptocurrency so that you can stay as aware and as up to date as possible. And I try to do everything with a very kind of calm and level headed approach so that, you know, the FUD and all the fear and all that type of stuff, you know, we could take a step back, we could look at things and we can just put everything in perspective. So let's get into it. So what actually dropped the absolute living hell out of the cryptocurrency market today? Well, it started with this tweet from Bitcoin China, uh, BTC China, which is an exchange actually headed by Bobby Lee, Charlie Lee of Light, Charlie of Litecoin. Bobby Lee is the CEO of, of BTC China, and they announced that after you know some of the news that came out in on September fourth regarding regulation within China, they are going to be they're going to stop all trading of Bitcoin of cryptocurrency on BTC China on September 30th. So if we take a look at, you can see this tweet here, I can link to it in the description as well, but we can take a look here. So here is 4 a.m. Eastern time when this announcement was made. If I look over 4 a.m. Eastern time, we'll take a look at how the market has performed since. The overall Bitcoin marketplace, this is using GDAX, GDAX, the US dollar, uh, Bitcoin trading is down 13, about 13 and a half percent. So it's moved from about 30, you know, it's down $520 in the course of less than 12 hours, obviously not a great move. Uh, and, you know, as we look at as we look at kind of how that moves with some other crypto as well, Ethereum also was trading at about 270 at 4am is now down $42 down 15 plus percent. Uh, we can take a look at Litecoin, Litecoin as well 4am is now down about 21%. So Litecoin's getting crushed under $50. Basically, everything in the entire cryptocurrency marketplace is getting hammered right now. And if we look at what that means and kind of trying to put things in perspective, we've been talking about this and I, I was talking about this in a number of different videos that I thought that this was eventually going to, you know, quite frankly, I thought this, this was eventually going to happen for no other reason too than what happened with the ICO regulation where there were rumors about this regulation happening. There were rumors coming out. Everybody called it FUD. They said it was BS. And then like three days later, the ICO regulation came out. This took a little bit longer, but there were rumors and news about Bitcoin exchanges being banned, Bitcoin exchanges having to shut down uh, you know, back from the beginning of September. Nothing really happened. There were, whether it was the Wall Street Journal articles with really no evidence, it was Bloomberg articles with no evidence, a lot of things with no evidence and unnamed sources came out. And I personally, in a lot of cases, just thought there was just too much FUD. There were too many rumors for this to be unsubstantiated and it, for it not to be true. So as we're looking at it now, this seems to be a preemptive attempt by Bitcoin China to shut things down and, and to not get themselves in trouble, but it's still it's still obviously huge news. Now, what does this mean too when we're looking at? So if I pull up coin market cap, I look at the 24 hour volume on exchanges. You can see here, you know, as we look at the different exchanges that are trading, Bitfinex being the biggest, Bitthumb, uh, OKCoin being number four. And I, my pronunciation on this is going to be terrible, but Huobi, uh, number six, those are two Chinese exchanges, Huobi at number six, uh, okcoin.cn at number four. Those are bringing in about $422 million worth of volume on a daily basis, okcoin, and Huobi at about 386. So combining for over, I mean, that's, you know, $800 million worth of volume. Now, it takes us a while to scroll back and scroll back and then find where we have our friends over at BTCC, uh, BTC China 
is doing about $94 million worth of volume right now. Now, I'm sure I haven't checked actually previously in the past couple of days what that volume is, but I'm sure that is somewhat slightly affected by the Bitcoin Bitcoin news and the, the news of their ban. But as we're looking at this right now, BTCC is the 17th largest exchange by volume on coin market cap. But as we're looking at this overall news about China, this doesn't just apply to BTCC. This applies to Huobi. This applies to OKCoin as well. And we can take a look back here with we can take a look back here with what's going on. I'll scroll this back over to get a better view, but we can take a look back here at what's going on. And there was a specific point where the market you know, had some crazy sell volume within really the past hour. And has to do with some of this tweet and Charlie Lee's kind of response to it. And so if we pull up the original thread here from CN Ledger, which talks about Bitcoin China stopping trading, and then uh, it goes on to say that there were a couple other issues with it. But so here, the third response, which is, I think, quite important. Number three, OKCoin and Huobi PR said that they have not received a notice from regulators and they are operating normally. Okay, so great news. Maybe B, B, uh, BTC China is just kind of shutting things down preemptively. Sounds good, right? Charlie Lee comes out, the founder of Litecoin. If you're not familiar with him, Charlie Lee, the founder of Litecoin, used to be the director of engineering at Coinbase, comes out and tweets, OKCoin and Huobi are actually meeting with regulators, Chinese regulators tomorrow, so that they might be basically, they're going to meet with regulators tomorrow, and they might as well be shutting down tomorrow. As soon as he tweeted this at 10.03 a.m. this morning, we can take a look back at what effect that had. So this was uh, 11 a.m., you know, this was 10 a.m. from there, going forward, another massive, massive drop in the uh, marketplace. Actually, I believe that was, um, I have the wrong time on this. I believe that was a little bit later from, from that standpoint. So this was actually 103, excuse me, this was 103 PM, uh, not 10, 103 PM Eastern time. So within the past hour, as I look back on this, on this chart here, you can see the exact point. I'll make it a 15 minute chart. So you can kind of see the exact point basically right here where we have it one o'clock red, 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 and I'll pull up from a percentage wise as well. But basically, since Charlie Lee's tweet, Bitcoin is down another, you know, three, 4% close to it. Litecoin getting crushed at that point in time as well with the one o'clock time frame, you know, down about another 4%. So what does that really mean? And, and how do I think we can play things moving forward, judging from this? So I think in some respects, the, the potential that OKCoin okay and Huobi can stop trading is a little bit a little bit priced into the market, but I also think that this is still very much, especially with all this China news, very much news driven at this point in time. And if and when OKCoin okay and Huobi meet with Chinese regulators tomorrow and then potentially announce that they are going to halt trading in the near future on their exchanges, basically shut down, then I think that is going to significantly drop the price. Because it's one thing if we have an exchange that has $94 million worth of volume as the 17th largest exchange by volume. It's another thing if we lose the sixth largest exchange and then the fourth largest exchange. If you're talking about volume, I think that's going to put a big impact on the actual price of cryptocurrencies as a whole. I think that is going to, quite frankly, present a a large sell-off here moving forward. And I mean, we can look here too. There's basically been nothing that's been able to kind of withstand this this news today. Top 10, all down double digits in red. Top 20, all down double digits in red, minus ARC up 2%. Um, but I mean, as you're looking at this, basically every single cryptocurrency for the most part, minus a few kind of stragglers is down over double digits. So what am I looking at? What do I think this means long term? Well, number one, I do, I do think I would, I would expect, quite frankly, I would expect that news within, if it doesn't happen tomorrow, within the next couple of days, 
maybe OKCoin, maybe Huobi meet with regulators tomorrow. Maybe they, you know, take a few days to figure out what the hell they're going to say from a PR perspective or come up with a strategy. But I wouldn't doubt if OKCoin and Huobi shut down trading similar to BTC China. That would not surprise me. And I'm kind of expecting that, quite frankly. So that's number one. And when when that happens and when I do expect that to happen, I do expect the price to go down significantly again as well. You know, Bitcoin dropping and basically everything else dropping alongside it. I think that's going to take a big haircut. Now, what happens from there? I think there's going to be a certain point where this news stops driving the market and people start ignoring what happens with China and ignoring once this news comes out, basically just you know, saying, you know what, screw it, screw China. This isn't changing fundamentally speaking. This isn't going to make that, you know, this isn't affecting Bitcoin. This isn't affecting cryptocurrency five, 10 years from now. So I think that there is going to be a specific point in time where we bottom, you know, can it be under $3,000? Absolutely per Bitcoin. Can it be under 2,500? Yeah, potentially for sure. I think this has the potential to, you know, really kind of hammer, hammer the marketplace. If okay, coin, if you will be, um, you know, suspend trading now also long-term, what is, what does this mean too? So I've heard multiple rumors about what this means from, from a Chinese perspective, if, they are if these exchanges are just shutting down temporarily to avoid further scrutiny from the exchanges and they're basically putting in a a law similar to what New York did with the bit license and trying to just really heavily regulate this and make sure that they have everything in place and then they'll basically BTC China uh, will reopen in the future maybe okay coin if if okay coin and Huobi actually close then they would reopen as well. So I think that's one thing to, you know, to keep an eye on and to understand is this, you know, as of now, this sounds like an indefinite thing, but I think long term, hopefully China is smart enough to realize that there's a lot of innovation going on. There's a lot of usefulness and they're just trying to regulate this as, as quickly as possible. But this does, in my opinion, have the potential to, you know, to take the overall cryptocurrency markets down for the long term. So what do you do about that? If you are, you know, if you're new to the space, you know, I think there's unfortunately the way these market cycles work for the most part, you know, quite frankly, if I'm looking at things, I'll look up the four hour charts. But unfortunately, the way these market cycles work, or I can even pull up the one day charts here for Bit. I'll do for Bitcoin. And you know, when 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 a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, when something like Pull up the one day charts when something happens where, you know, over the month of August, Bitcoin goes or over the month of July, August, where Bitcoin goes from being worth, you know, two thousand plus dollars all the way to five thousand dollars. That brings a lot of new people into the space, brings a lot of new money into the space and you know gets people really excited about things. And that means that a lot of people that are brand new to cryptocurrency are buying at four thousand dollars. They're buying at $4,500. They're buying at $5,000. So you, you know, if, that, if that's you, you took an absolute bath so far and you've, you've gotten hammered. Um, and there's also a lot of people that have been around since, you know, Bitcoin was $200, $500, $800, sub $100, uh, Ethereum, things like that. At this point in time, I think there's kind of two, you know, really for the most part, two ways to go about it. Fundamentally speaking, I don't think anything's changing about the technology. I really don't. Um, and I think long term, this is going to shake out and this is going to go in a positive direction. For the short term, I think this brings up about a lot of uncertainty. And you can certainly see it within the past two days, these massive, massive red candles. The two things that, in my opinion, if you you know have purchased right now is or if you purchased previously and, and you have a, a large position is basically the two strategies are just close your eyes, hold. You know, trust that things are going to get better, that you're probably not going to be able to time the market that well and um, that you can that eventually, you know, Bitcoin is not going to is going to go back about $5,000 and you'll be all right. And that's fine. Or alternatively, you could potentially sell and try to buy back in lower. Or and then the kind of last thing is say like, screw it, I'm, I, I can't deal with the volatility and I'm going to pack up my bags, take the losses and go home. I wouldn't necessarily advise against that. I think that especially if you're new to the space, yeah, you might be in some losses, but you know, long term, um, I wouldn't pack up your bags and go. If you want to be in crypto, there's there's volatility there. And that that absolutely is going to happen. This is a crazy volatile market. Look in the past two days. It's not surprising to see, you know, when the price goes from 4100 down 21% for a you know, down 20% or so down almost $900 in two days. That'll happen. That's crypto. You take 
you know, to participate in this market, you have to take these massive green bars, and then you have to take the big red bars. And that is that is kind of what it is. But for me personally, it's, you know, the two kind of major, major strategies is at this point in time, just kind of, if you have a big position, hold your eyes, or <laughs> hold, hold those eyes closed, and just kind of pray for the best. And just be prepared for a bumpy ride because I think a bumpy ride is coming and that's going to happen. And I, I think we're in the midst of a bear market right now for the time being until this China mess gets straightened out and then we'll go from there. Or, you know, if you're really not comfortable with the risk or if you're just looking to buy in lower, wait for a little bit of a rebound. I mean, this is, this is kind of a, a tough place to be selling, you know, near the bottom, but wait for a little bit of a re- rebound, wait for a green candle somewhere and then look to sell off a little bit and see if you can buy back and lower because I would, you know, quite frankly, and I I do anticipate more negative news coming out if OKCoin and Huobi, if that goes down. So we'll see what happens. But overall, you know, just kind of try to, I know this can be a stressful time and this could be a negative time for a lot of people. um, But try to relax as much as possible and don't make emotional decisions with what you're doing. If you're going to make a decision, make sure it's well thought out, make sure it's well planned and that you are not letting emotions, letting tweets like this, whatever it is, letting red candles, don't let things get the best of you, make smart decisions about kind of how you're moving forward. And the last thing too is, you know, if you are, you know, if you've had fiat on the sidelines, if you've had money on the sidelines, if you've been waiting for a dip, these are the times where everybody's freaking out and everybody's going nuts. These are the times where you make that move, you, you know, whether you, go all in now or you dollar cost average. And, I, and I've always been a big advocate advocate for dollar cost averaging as well. Um, I've had a lot of people always ask me like, hey, you know, I have X amount of money. What should I do? Should I put $5,000 in today? And I say, no. And this was you know, last week. I said, put $5,000 in this or put $1,000 in this week, put $1,000 in next week, and then put $1,000 in the week after that and do that for five weeks or do that for five months. And if you did that, you'd be in a lot better shape than if you just threw five grand in last week and you'd be down 25, 30%. That's why you dollar cost average. And I think that's a lesson for a lot of people as well. So always keep that in mind. You know, be <laughs> be fearful when others are greedy. Be greedy when others are feel, fearful. Right now, others are fearful. There's not great things happening in the marketplace. You can see that. Take that advice for what it's worth. Take that into consideration. But try to just keep an eye, especially, I mean, I think Twitter is a really good place too, as far as seeing what happens and seeing kind of how these things are moving in real time. Cause it's pretty incredible how one tweet from somebody like Charlie Lee can literally drive a three, 4%, 5% market movement on a multi-billion dollar cryptocurrency market. It's crazy to see, but it happens and it is what it is. So I'm always keeping that, uh, you know, keeping that kind of understanding and keeping my eye on that now, outside of that, guys, like I said, if you are new here, I'm definitely trying to keep you as abreast on this information as I as I literally and possibly can. So if you need anything, if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments here. I'd love to hear what you're doing at this point in time from you know how you're kind of handling things, what's going on for, for your mind and how you're going to kind of adjust on the fly if you're buying, if you're just holding, or if you're going to try and sell and buy back and lower. Let me know what your thoughts are. Happy to hear from you. Again, this is Rob from Crypto Bobby. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck, whether you're buying, if you're trading, if you're holding, if you're selling. My name is Rob from Crypto Bobby. I hope you have an awesome day. Peace.